This is the Garden of English. I'm Tim Freitas, and today for our underclassmen video, we're going to start talking about what it actually takes to develop a strong topic sentence. So, if you want to know how to write a better topic sentence, you're going to want to stick around. All right, we are back here. Uh, it's been a couple weeks since our last set of underclassmen videos. If you haven't actually seen what we've done before, we started this whole underclassmen series about being a better reader and a better writer, and we started doing it with summaries. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to point you up here uh, to click on those links up there if you want to catch the other videos, right? But today what we're going to do is we're going to start shifting towards topic sentences. I'm going to actually shift away from Langston Hughes' thank you, ma'am. I'm going to also shift away from my summaries with the little boy who cried wolf as my examples. Um, and today I'm going to use um, uh, examples from The Pearl by John Steinbeck and from... Uh, Romeo and Juliet by William Shakespeare as we talk about topic sentences. Now, before I give some examples of topic sentences and before I shrink myself up uh, on the screen and look at a couple steps here, I want to just talk about what a topic sentence does, right? In order to actually write strong topic sentences, you have to know what the function of it is. The function of a topic sentence is meant to create some sort of contract between you and the reader where you are directing your reader about exactly what will come in the paragraph to follow. The best topic sentences are going to do what the best communication does, and that is it's going to mix elements of the concrete with elements of the abstract. If you only have one or the other, it's not going to actually work very well. Let me give you an example. If I have a topic sentence for a paragraph and I say William Shakespeare presents a metaphor and I put a period, that's not going to be a strong topic sentence because we only have the concrete. We don't have the meaning of that metaphor, so that's not going to drive our paragraph. A topic sentence should be so well constructed that if you forget what you're doing in the middle of a paragraph, if you go to the topic sentence, you'll be able to go back and say, oh yeah, this is exactly what I have to do. In fact, I think Jiminy Cricket was right when he actually said to Pinocchio, always let your topic sentence be your guide. Or something like that, right? <laughs> Maybe it was conscience. I don't know. But anyway, nonetheless, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to talk today about what does a strong topic sentence actually have in it, and I'll show you a couple examples of it. So now what we'll do is we'll actually shrink up here on our page. Um, let me get up in the corner there. Make sure I don't lose my face here. Um, and we'll actually have this document linked up down below in the files uh, sorry, in the description so you can have access to this for your steps. Now, these are the steps for creating a topic sentence, okay? And I'm going to assume that we're creating a topic sentence that comes from a prompt. Now, um, it might not be the case. If it's not the case, then you just need to make sure that if you're not given a prompt that you're writing about something concrete and something abstract. But I'm going to go from, hey, if we're given a prompt, what should we do to create a strong topic sentence? So the first thing that we want to do is that when we're given a prompt, step one is we want to actually create what questions from the prompt itself. We don't want to ask why. We don't want to ask how. And the reason why is because the word what, when we ask a question with the word what, it's extremely easy. Think about this, right? What's your favorite food? you probably can answer that right away. But when I start asking, how do you know and why is that the case? It typically becomes a little bit more complicated. And that's the nature actually of a, of a body paragraph or any paragraph that you ever write, okay? The topic sentence is, what are we going to talk about on both the concrete and abstract levels? And then the rest of it is, how and why is this the case? How and why does this concrete element relate to this abstraction? So if we have a prompt, we want to create some what questions. And what we do is we go into the prompt and we just say, what can't we know? And we'll give an example of that in just a moment. Um, actually, we'll do it right now. If you look at where it says example prompt one, and this is for Romeo and Juliet, we have read act one of the play Romeo and Juliet by William Shakespeare. After reading, write a well-developed paragraph that analyzes how Tybalt is characterized throughout the text. Okay, easy enough. All I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say, what can't I know until I've actually read Act 1 of Romeo and Juliet? And sure enough, do I know I'm supposed to read Act 1? Yeah, it says so right here. Do I know that we're reading Romeo and Juliet? Yeah, it says so right here. Do I know it's by William Shakespeare? Yeah, I think you get it. It says so right here. Do I also know that I have to write a well-developed paragraph? Yep. Do I even know what character I'm going to talk about? Yes, it's Tybalt. Do I know in what ways his, he's characterized yet? No, I don't. I don't know what his character is yet. 
So all I'm going to do is turn that into a what question, right? What, and then I'm going to insert the enigmatic elements from the prompt. And I have what is Tybalt's character throughout Act 1. That's it. And now what I have to do is I have to create a topic sentence that answers that, that has something concrete from the story in it, and that's probably going to be our character of Tybalt, and then the abstract qualities that he exhibits. And that is going to help us put together a strong topic sentence. Let's look at another prompt here. Okay, I have example prompt two on the screen now, and this comes from a story called The Pearl. Maybe I can zoom in here a little bit. Let's do that. There we go. Okay, it says read the novel The Pearl by John Steinbeck, and after reading the story, write a well-developed paragraph that analyzes Kino's attitude towards his position in life. And actually, this should probably just say read chapter one of The Pearl by John Steinbeck, because this is where uh, I pulled this example prompt from, but... Nonetheless, here, I just go through and I say, what can't I know? But you're going to notice uh, that would be before I read chapter one of the Pearl. And you're going to notice, though, that what I can't know here um, is Kino's attitude in his position in life. So there are actually two questions that we're going to ask. And the reason why we're asking these questions is because we now know that we have to answer these in general terms while we write our paragraph, particularly our topic sentence. So in our topic sentence, these two questions have to be answered. What is Kino's position in life? What is his attitude toward that position? Okay, if I were to go back to prompt one, we only have one question. What is Tybalt's character throughout the act? I have to be able to answer that, okay? And so I'm going to. So once I read it, if I can actually answer these questions, I'm now going to put this together into a topic sentence, and we have steps for how to do that in step two right here. When you write a strong topic sentence, it says you want your topic sentence to include the tag. That just stands for title, author, and genre. And then it says here, never containing, make sure your topic sentence includes tag, never contains the word by when referencing the author, and make sure to answer the what questions, we should have that be questions, generated from the prompt. I want to definitely highlight this here for just a moment, okay? This middle part that says never containing the word by when referencing the author. A lot of times kids are tempted to say in Romeo and Juliet by William Shakespeare, in The Pearl by John Steinbeck. The reason why we don't want to put the word by in our topic sentences is because when you do so, you do not allow the author to be an active part of what you're about to write about. And therefore, you're not giving the author the authority that they have. In fact, you're even pushing yourself, or if you're a teacher, you're pushing your kids into summary mode, okay? And that's a problem. We want to avoid summary mode. We want to get into analysis, and analysis is typically done at the root by using the correct verbs. So what we're going to do is we're going to encourage, I'm going to encourage you, and teachers should encourage you if you're students, um, to actually put the author's name and follow that with a verb. Do not put the word by in these topic sentences. Don't allow your students to put the word by in these topic sentences because we want the author to be doing things. And that's how we're going to produce better literary analysis. So let me just give you an example right here. Okay. In my prompt for Tybalt, for my prompt one, I have to analyze how he's characterized throughout Act One. Okay, and you're going to notice that in my example answer, it says in Act 1 of Romeo and Juliet. Now, please note, I am supposed to have my title, author, and genre here. And you might actually look at this and say, there is no genre. We see the title, Romeo and Juliet. We see the author, which is Shakespeare, but there's no genre. Well, the genre is implied because I wrote Act 1 right here. And that implies that it's actually a play. Anyway, it says in Act 1 of Romeo and Juliet, Shakespeare develops Tybalt's aggressively violent yet quite loyal nature. Now, what you're going to notice about this particular topic sentence is this, okay? A couple things. First of all, we have Shakespeare develops. So Shakespeare becomes an active uh, party in the development of this character, which is great because he's the author and he did develop the character. I'd also like to point out here that what you did not see here is the repeating of the question itself. A lot of students are taught to repeat the question itself, but honestly, that sounds terrible and mechanical. Let me give you an example. Most of the times, kids would want to say, in the play Romeo and Juliet, Shakespeare develops Tybalt, I mean, uh, Shakespeare characterizes Tybalt as blank, right? Or the characterization of Tybalt is blank. That is all dead weight language there, okay? We do not need you to put the word characterize in there to actually tell us that you're reading for characterization. 
And I know that because these are character traits, aggressively violent yet quite loyal nature. Okay, so these are character traits. We are not just repeating the prompt. If you teach kids to repeat the prompt, that's when they typically fall into these topic sentences that say, in Romeo and Juliet, Tybalt is characterized, period. At first, he's seen as being incredibly mean, period. And then we have problems. But when I actually have a topic sentence like this, I'm going to see the mixture of the concrete and the abstract, and it's going to guide the rest of the paragraph. So we have the concrete Tybalt right here. And then we also have the abstract character qualities, aggressively violent and quite loyal. And now I know exactly what this paragraph is going to do. I'm going to first be shown examples in the text that show him as being rather aggressive and violent. That example is going to go in. The author uh, is then going, of the paragraph is then going to explain to me how that example shows that aggressive and violent nature. Then we're going to get another piece of textual evidence in there that also highlights his loyalty and that's going to show us how Tybalt is the sorry. Then the character, excuse me, the author of the paragraph will explain how it shows Tybalt's loyal nature, and this guides the whole paragraph. So when a kid gets to a topic sentence like this, it sounds strong, and they say, "Okay, I need to find evidence that he's aggressive and violent." I'll put that evidence in my paragraph, and I'll explain how it's aggressive and violent, and then I'll find evidence where it shows that he's loyal, and I'll explain how it shows that he's loyal. And then your paragraph will be done. You're going to notice that we've got a nice layered paragraph, so therefore it's a complex paragraph. And it's going to be well developed because it follows a topic sentence that does not sound like a machine. In Act 1 of Romeo and Juliet, Shakespeare develops um, Tybalt's character as blah, blah, blah. No, that's not what we have, right? We also don't have in Act 1 of Romeo and Juliet by Shakespeare, Tybalt is characterized as... And then we leave it at that. No, we've got something dynamic. We've got something compelling. And it's a really strong topic sentence. Well, what do we do when we have two questions that we have to answer in our topic sentence, like this one from John Steinbeck's The Pearl? Don't forget, we have to say, what is Kino's position in life? And then we have, what is Kino's attitude toward that position? But I don't have to actually use the words position in life. Kino's position in life is, and he feels this way about it, or he has this attitude towards it. I can actually put it in a sentence where I'm trying to avoid using those words, but I am using language that will refer to, the, um, to that verbiage in the prompt itself. So look at my example here. It says, at the beginning of the novel, The Pearl, John Steinbeck presents Kino expressing familiarity and contentment towards being surrounded by his family in his Oceanside hut. Look at how nicely that creates a topic sentence that will direct what we're doing. We have the attitude, familiarity, and contentment. We have his position in life. He's on the ocean side. He's with his family. He lives in a hut, so he's probably not extremely wealthy. And because of that, we've got all of this together in a nice sentence that's going to guide the body paragraph. Why? Because now I'm going to pull some evidence that shows he's in an ocean side hut with his family, and I'm going to then explain how his actions there showcase that he's familiar and content with that. That's going to guide a really strong paragraph. So that's why these topic sentences are so important because they guide everything you do later on as you connect the concrete in the abstract. So I hope that was actually a helpful explanation about how to develop really strong topic sentences. Um, I'm going to maximize my view here again, and then I'll actually try to get this little red circle out of the way. Um, well, no, we'll keep it up there for today. I guess life will indeed go on. But... If this video was helpful, we're always going to ask that you like and subscribe and that you stay tuned for more underclassmen videos. We're going to actually write these paragraphs. And the next step in writing a paragraph besides a topic sentence is textual evidence integration. So we're going to make a video about that. And I'll write these two paragraphs. And then we'll talk about literary commentary and paragraph and commentary based on topic sentences in this underclassmen form. Once again, check out the other underclassmen videos because they deal with a lot of the writing mechanics that show up in our commentary. So it's important to have that foundation. Once again, you can find those right up here. Okay, we ask that you like and subscribe to the Garden of English once again so that you can follow along with all of our series. Also, you can uh, check us out on Facebook, you can follow us on Instagram, and you can pick up some of our merch. As always, these videos are free, however, we hope that you can enjoy and we hope that you can become a better communicator because of it. 